Hi friends. This week I'm going to ask a really weird question, which is, did I find D&D's most offensive product ever? Ah, uh, I don't know. So here's what happened. Oh, by the way, I'm in a hotel room. So if you're watching on YouTube and this looks different, that's why. And uh, more importantly, if you're listening to the podcast or on YouTube uh, and you hear noises, you know, that's other people in the hotel, whatever. So anyway, here's what happened. I was sitting at home one day and a little bored and wanted to do something gaming-y, right? And I'm like, I think I'll make a character. And something I've always wanted to do was play in kind of a Stone Age civilization, you know, no metals or something. And it dawned on me that there was an existing D&D &D product, like official D&D, &D, even not even some third party, but old school official D&D &D product that dealt with a Stone Age society. And it was uh, Gazetteer number 14, which was the Etruigan clans. Now, for those that don't know about the Gazetteer series, they were part of TSR's The Known World, which was the default setting for uh, so-called basic D&D, &D. starting with, I think, the Menser edition. Um, but, you know, it was a couple folks at TSR. It was their homegrown campaign world, and they decided to use it for... Uh, you know, to fill in some space in the book, you know, as a sample campaign. And then when Expert came on, you know, a little more got added. And then uh, <laughs> Companion, Master, you know, the whole thing. And eventually, what they decided to do was to release these as separate products, right? And so there were 14 books called Gazetteers. Each one covered a different country in the world. Well, some of those were based on uh, the races, right? Because there was like the elf country and the dwarf country and the orc country uh, and the hobbit country. The Five Shires was the name of that one. The others, well, one of them was pretty much your most generic fantasy world, I guess. Uh, but the rest were, a lot of them were based on real world cultures that they like reduced down to cliche level. Um, like there's one from the Mongolians, there's one for the Aztecs. And the one I'm talking about, Gazetteer number 14, um, the Etrugan clans was about the Native American tribes or the American Indian tribes or the First Nation tribes, depending on what you want to call them. So I was like, yeah, let me, let me make a character for this. And so, yeah, I got out the book and I was uh, looking through it. I'm like, oh yeah, great. And there were rules for rolling up stats. So I started looking through the book and I came across this. For strength and constitution, it says, life on and around the Etrugan Plateau is hard. Without the amenities of so-called civilization to protect them, the children of a true gang are forced to rely upon their own physical fitness at all times. For this reason, characters from this region roll four six-sided dice for these ability scores, adding the highest three to determine the actual rating. Then it gives an example. All right, so that makes sense. They're saying life in this Stone Age society is difficult, and if you don't have good strength, and if you don't have a good constitution, you're probably not going to make it. So roll high with those. Okay. All right. I'm down with that. That makes sense. But then there was this. Intelligence and wisdom. With the demands of survival placed upon members of the Etrugan clans by the world around them, it is easy to see why the intellectual abilities are somewhat lacking. Um, somewhat lacking. Huh. 
So if this were something like orcs, I wouldn't care. But this culture is clearly based on the Native American nations. Um, and to take a real world people and to say their intellectual abilities are somewhat lacking. I don't know, that's just, that's cringe. If you bought any TSR products from Drive Through RPG, you will notice that um, in all their listings, they contain a disclaimer. This is it. We, wizards, recognize that some of the legacy content available on this website does not reflect the values of the Dungeons & Dragons franchise today. Some older content may reflect ethnic, racial, and gender prejudice that were commonplace in American society at that time. These depictions were wrong then and they are wrong today. This content is presented as it was originally created because to do otherwise would be the same as claiming that these prejudices never existed. Dungeons & Dragons teaches that diversity is a strength and we strive to make our D&D products as welcoming and inclusive as possible. This is part of our work that will never end. All right. So that's a nice disclaimer. I've heard about it before, but I always saw it was a little over the top, right? I always heard that it was applied to like racial modifiers for like orcs and elves. And I was always like, who cares? They're not real. It's, it's an orc. If you want to say orcs are stupid or all orcs are chaotic or whatever, loosen up, right? But me personally, I think that this is one case where that disclaimer is justified. But before I throw them completely under the bus, let, let me, first of all, read the rest of that quote. So, with the demands of survival placed upon the members of the Etrugan clans by the world around them, it is easy to see why their intellectual abilities are somewhat lacking. This should not be taken to indicate that members of the clan are any less intelligent than those in the rest of the world, only that they lack the time and schooling systems needed to fully develop their mental powers. Thus, when generating a Trugan clan character's roll four, six-sided dice for his intelligence and wisdom scores, discarding the highest die. So in essence, you're getting a penalty for those two scores versus the bonus you got for the others. And from a game design point, standpoint, I see what they're doing. It's just a balance thing, right? We gave you two bonuses, so now we're giving you two penalties just to balance things out. And had they just said it that way, I think I would have been okay without throwing in the try to justify why their intellect is lacking. I, I don't, is it just me? <laughs> am, am I, am I? Adding, I don't know, too much. Like I said, I don't think there was malice. Um, I just, it rubs me the wrong way. I don't like it. Um, what do you think? Yeah, that, I mean, it's a serious question. If you disagree with me, let me know. If you agree with me, let me know. Um, and I'm curious now to go into the others, to the ones about the Aztecs and, oh, the Mongols. And I think there's one about the Chinese and stuff. And uh, look at those and see if there's stuff like that. Yeah, um, and I could go off on this for a while, but I, I think I made my point. So I'm not going to belittle it, uh, belittle it. I'm not going to drag it out or anything. I, I really want to know what you think, though. Let, let me know. Is, <laughs> is this TSR's most offensive product? Uh, <laughs> is this D&D's most offensive quote? Um, do they have something more offensive? Is this not offensive at all? Am I just making too much about it? Maybe part of it is the land I'm sitting on right now used to be owned by the Iroquois people. And right over... 
that way, behind me kind of, um, there is property that's owned by the tribes right now. And over to my left, <laughs> um, there's this really cool building that's shaped like a turtle because one of the clans was the turtle clan. And there's actually even a turtle clan in this book. So that's kind of cool. But um, yeah, it used to be the, the, uh, the tribe's cultural center. It's not anymore. It's up for sale, I think. Um, it's just around the corner <laughs> of, the, of the Red Coach Inn, which if you're a fan of The Office, that's where Jim and Pam have their uh, wedding rehearsal dinner. <laughs> Not important trivia, um, right? I I don't know. Anyway, that's all I'm gonna say about this. I could probably go on and on, but I'd just be repeating the same points over and over again. Do let me know how you feel. Next week, though, I am going to go through the process of making that character. I'm going to follow the rules in this book, and I'm going to make a character as laid out in this book and present it to you. Um, but until then, please, again, let me know what you think about this, um, this quote, this lower intelligence thing. Um, again, they're, 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 their justification, I think, just makes it worse, right? Because they're not saying, it doesn't mean that they have less intellect, even though you just said that they have less intellect, and that's the very definition of the intelligence score. I, I don't know. Anyway, feedback at decahedron.com. YouTube, you can comment down below. Uh, the email can be uh, voice comments, of course. You can attach that, or it can be uh, text. <laughs> uh, or you can use the feedback line. I don't remember the number. It's in the show notes. Uh, thanks again for listening and watching. And until next time, happy gaming, happy life. Bye.